Hey everybody, today we're going to be talking about how to spot a tornado using radar. Uh, we're going to talk about a couple of different ways that you can do it. Um, of course you almost always want to use velocity, but you can also use reflectivity to a certain degree. Um, but let's go ahead and get some things out of the way first. So first of all we're going to be using GR2 Analyst or Gibson Ridge version 2 analyst edition and the first event we're going to look at is the Manchester tornado from April 15th 2012. We're going to be looking at several different tools that we have in our toolbox. The first one is going to be reflectivity. Now you can check and uncheck these boxes up here at the top and this will allow you to remove those warning polygons. I'm going to leave them off for now just so we can look at this. Now we're going to go back to two panels. I have mine set up here. You can customize those. Well, Let's just go ahead and take a look at this. So this supercell already was producing a tornado back here. Now I didn't go much further back in the archive. But let's go ahead and play it forward one step at a time here. Now you can see it was already warned right here. So there was already a confirmed tornado. And you can see this kind of eagle shaped supercell here. And let's get out the pen. You can kind of see the, the shape here. And that's kind of the eagle's wings. But uh, you can see the hook echo right here. Now this is what we call a hook echo. This isn't as well defined as we're going to see a little bit later. But let's just kind of show you. When we talk about a hook echo, this is what we're talking about. That's a hook echo. So. That's one way you can kind of tell if there's a supercell there. Uh, that's kind of the classic supercell book. That doesn't necessarily mean there's a tornado. But in this case, you can kind of look at the velocity to see maybe there's a tornado here. Now, we're kind of far from the radar, so it's, it's going to be looking pretty high up. Um, and if we go back to our cursor, we're looking at 2200 feet up or something like that so that's pretty pretty high and as we go here we're getting closer and closer so let me zoom out a little bit <clears throat> clear our drawing and we're gonna we're gonna watch this supercell as it goes northeast here and i'm just gonna go one scan at a time and it's kind of cycling here and here's another one, and it's still obviously producing a tornado, but I want you to notice it looks a little bit different on velocity now. Much more defined, and my guess is that it's getting closer to the radar, and that's why you can see this a little bit better. But you've got some reds here, and then you've got some greens here. These indicate that the winds are going in different directions here and it's kind of like spinning. And that's that's kind of how you can tell if there's a tornado there, but it's not always that obvious. Let's go ahead and keep going. Because I really want to highlight this when it really becomes obvious when we have a really good velocity signature. Let's get a little closer. Now right here, these two frames, this one in particular, really show we've got a pretty good tornado going on there. I'm going to point out a couple of things. The first one I'm going to point out is this ball of pink right here. This is likely showing some debris in here, but this is pretty much where your tornado is going to be. 
and you can tell by the velocity signature here we've got some we've got some pretty good winds going and if you go and actually look at the values which we have 135 I'll show you down here is where you're going to see those values down towards the bottom of this green where I just circled and when I hover over it you can see it shows 135 miles per hour and then here you have minus 76 so this is going away this is going towards and so you can really tell it's a pretty pretty good signature here for a tornado now we've also got some other yellow out here and this I would consider to be the RFD the rear flank downdraft although it's kind of looks like it's kind of going forward but it's kind of pushing out away from the tornado there because this is going towards so this is going towards the radar so this is pushing out eventually that will cut off the circulation and the tornado will die now here it's really pronounced really really pronounced and it's actually a little stronger here at 137 miles per hour and you can tell it's still going on but over here it's not as well defined it's kind of becoming a little bit a little bit more rain in there I'm going to guess so here we have 131 so it does look like it's gotten weaker and that's our last frame now there are more frames I just didn't download them but that kind of shows you the evolution of the tornado there. And we'll play it. And you can watch it really gets going there in, near Manchester. So that's one that's one thing that we can do. Let's back this up. Let's go right here. I want to go show you another one. Let's see correlation coefficient now this is another good one that we can use to determine if there's a tornado there now we're gonna we're gonna look at these two frames and let's bring out the pen so you can see this ball right here and I'm not using a good color let's use a different you can see this ball right here, and that corresponds to this right here. This blue on the correlation coefficient here shows a clear debris signature. Notice they're in the same location. So if we go forward, you'll see that that moves. Now it's here and here and that's the debris it would have picked up on whatever's out here dirt maybe some you know fences building materials whatever managed to destroy and that's what's there and the correlation coefficient basically just tells you that there's some big objects floating around in the sky up there and so that is essentially how <clears throat> we determine if there's a tornado. Now that's easier done with these isolated supercells than it is with say um, supercells embedded within a line of storms. Um, those are a little bit more difficult but you could still pick them out. I don't have any examples of that but this is a general how do you do this with this. Next we're going to take a look at one more example, uh, Dodge City from 2019, 518 2019. And you'll see kind of the same thing where we have a, a hook echo start to develop here. And you can see the velocity over here on the other side. You see this little couplet trying to form here, or already formed. Um, it keeps going. And you can see that couplet continue on, and then it kind of occludes there. 
got that classic hook echo here with a nice velocity signature with some greens here and some reds and yellows here. And that's pretty much how you're going to determine if there's a tornado. You can't just look at this and assume there's a tornado there, although this is a pretty good indication as well. But there are more factors. You might have something that looks like a hook echo, but you might not have this velocity couplet over here. And so that's something to consider. We'll also take a quick look at the correlation coefficient and let's see if there's any debris. Kind of hard to tell. There might be a little bit in there, but it might have been over open open terrain where there's not much for it to pick up. But that's pretty much it. Let me go back to our two panels here. And uh, thanks everybody for watching, and I hope you learned something. If you have any recommendations for future videos, or if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave a comment below. Don't forget to hit like, and if you're not subscribed, please go ahead and click the subscribe button. Thank you. Yeah.